Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hey. On my video about the prices of meat in Mexico, I got a lot of comments that seemed surprised at the prices. Um, I want to preface this by saying that there are a lot of websites that talk about how cheap it is to live in Mexico. And uh, some of them have ulterior motives. I'm not naming names, but some of them lead you to a real estate uh, listing. Some of them lead you to uh, uh, some medical service or cosmetic surgery. And some of them are just people who um, have sold themselves on how wonderful it is here. And I try not to let myself sell myself on that. I do believe it's very wonderful here. And I sit out here by the lake and promise myself that I will never take it for granted. But I like to, uh, I, I, I like to say to you that I'm gonna tell you the truth. I don't mind talking about the good and the bad in Mexico. And it's not all good. Um, the price of meat. I got several comments, and that's why I started to talk about this today. I got several comments that seemed very surprised that they were that were paid here at Walmart about the same price as what you could get meat for in the United States. And the fact is that. I think I pay more for the same quality of meat here at Walmart than I would at Walmart or, you know, on sale at Safeco or uh, at Safeway, isn't it? Safeway or, you know, Ralph's or whatever it is in the States that you go shopping to, shopping at. Um, you can buy less expensive meat here, and if it's your need or your minimalist desire to live cheaper here, um, you can go to smaller meat markets frequented by uh, local people and um, find lower prices. Uh, the cow might be butchered in the back of a pickup out in the alley and I'm not, I'm not just saying that, I'll, I'll show you pictures. Um, so maybe you get what you pay for even in Mexico. But there are other things that do make living in Mexico much more economical than some other places in the world. So I want to give you some examples of those. Um, for instance, the property taxes on this property and if you've watched my videos, you've seen some of the property. I should make a tour of the whole property. Um, my property taxes here are less than 300 US dollars per year. And it includes garbage service. So compared to what I would pay in the States, and I've owned places in the states that weren't nearly the uh, um, property that this is. And the property taxes were much, much more. If you go back to my video about Portland, Oregon, a couple of years ago when I showed you the 7,000 square foot house we used to live in, I moved out of that in 1988 because the property taxes went to $9,000 per year. Um, and uh, I didn't want to pay that anymore. That was a very nice house. And it was a very nice property. I don't know if it was any better than this one. I did, I, well, I'm going to edit that out. So, property taxes less than $300 a year. My health insurance is less than $400 a year. And that's uh, health insurance for the masses. It's government health insurance. It's called IMSS or EAMS. 
And when you get an appointment, it might take a month to get it. It's definitely, I guess you call it socialized medicine. But that $400 per year includes everything. Um, they don't have a billing department in the system. When I go to the clinic, there's no cash register. When you go to the hospital, there's no, well, there's no, there's no billing department. And the hospital that we are assigned to, which is about uh, 35 miles from here, um, it was built uh, about four or five years ago. Pretty much state of the art. It's very nice. Now you can get more expensive health care uh, at private clinics or private hospitals, and there's very, very good health care here. Medicare doesn't pay outside of the United States, so when we're in the States, we have Medicare and a supplement. So when we're traveling in the motorhome, we're, we're fully covered that way. But here in Mexico, we're covered by government health insurance, less than $400 per year, and that includes meds, and there's no copay. They don't have all the meds. There's one that my wife uh, uses that uh, they just don't have it in the system. Uh, speaking of that, now it sounds very inexpensive to have uh, health care like that, and it is. Um, some things are more expensive and some things are less expensive. I started to say that one of the meds that my wife uh, needs, it costs many times more here than it does in the United States. Other meds, uh, I recently did a, a little research for a family member, and she needs a topical cream for a, a skin condition. And in Oklahoma, she pays $100 for a small tube of it, plus the cost of going to the doctor to get the prescription. And I found the same medicine here over-the-counter, a tube twice as big for 52 pesos. I calculated that at today's exchange rate, it's $2.88. $2.88 versus $100 plus a doctor's visit. That's a big difference. And um, there are many things like that. Again, other things cost more money. Gas here now is about $3.50 a gallon. Uh, for regular, um, I don't know what premium or diesel is, I don't use them here. What else? Oh, um, I went to a restaurant two nights ago, um, one of our favorite ref restaurants here at Lakeside, and I had shrimp etouffee, and it was very, very good. I don't think you could get it much better in uh, New Orleans. Uh, it was 160 pesos, that's $8.88. That was for the meal of et, shrimp etouffee. Um, also had some, a, a loaf of cornbread and a Coca-Cola. So it was a little more than 8.88, but not much more. Um, why can restaurant prices be so much lower here? The minimum federal wage in Mexico City, and a lot of things in the country are based upon that, is, I don't know what it is, I'm giving you two, three, four year old information now and it changes. Um, last time I checked it was $6 US and something per day, not per hour, per day. So let's say it's less than $10 per day is the federal minimum wage in Mexico. One of the things that's um, based upon that minimum wage is traffic infractions. Last time I got a ticket, um, it was 52 pesos. And uh, that was for not having a license plate on the front of my car. And uh, if you pay it within five days, it's half price. So it was 26 pesos. And uh, what was that? That's like a dollar or something. Anyway, it's one, it, it at the time, so you can see it's several years since I got a ticket. 
at the time it was one minimum wage, one minimum federal wage in Mexico City. That's how they did. And something, some tickets are expensive here, like drunk driving is like 200 and some times the minimum daily wage. So that can get expensive. A seat belt is, uh, not wearing your seat belt is 600 to 1200 pesos. I don't know why there's a range, but that's what I, that's what I know it is. Um, remind me sometime to tell you about the uh, incidences of being stopped by the police. After you've been here a while, and the uh, local police get to know that you're a local person, and you speak a little bit of Spanish, and you understand how the system works, some of the police stops are uh, just opportunities to get nice stories. <laughs> and I'll tell you some of those. Remind me, please. What was I talking about? I was talking about the minimum daily wage in, in Mexico is very, very low compared to the United States. And the reason I'm talking about that is because it explains why you can get a good meal here for 10 bucks in a restaurant, a nice restaurant. Um, you, can get a, you can get a good Mexican meal, and I'm not talking about Tex-Mex, I'm talking about you know, food Mexicans eat, which is very, very good. Um, that uh, for like, you know, five bucks, in a, in a little Mexican hole-in-the-wall restaurant. That would be very, very good. The minimum wage being so low affects the cost of plumbers and electricians and um, uh, all of the service industries that uh, labor is a big part of the cost are less expensive in Mexico because the wages in Mexico are lower. That's why it seems economical to live in Mexico compared to other places. It's not because all of the prices like meat are cheaper or all of the medicine is cheaper. It's because on, 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 on the whole, if you're a good shopper and you don't go to what we call the gringo grocery store where a can of Campbell's soup in English, Campbell's chicken noodle soup might be 60 pesos. And a can of chicken, uh, a Campbell's talares con, uh, pollo con talares, chicken noodle soup, um, might be 25 pesos. Those are real numbers from another store that we have here at Lakeside. And for people who need to have things in English, it's different. It used to be the same with, uh, what was it? We used to, we used to buy um, um, Lynn. What was that salad dressing mix we always bought? Hidden Valley. We used to get Hidden Valley and it was like six, U.S. dollars, this is back when the exchange rate was 11 to 1, but it was 6 U.S. dollars, and if you bought the Mexican brand, which was kind of the same thing, it was like $2. Anyway, um, yes, you can live economically in Mexico. I like to say, and you may have heard me say this before, sometimes it's not about living cheap. Sometimes it's about a better standard of living for the same amount of money that you would pay somewhere else. Um, another cost of living that's economical here compared to other places I've lived. If you live in the northern United States, you have a big heating bill uh, in the wintertime. If you live in the southern United States, you have a big air conditioning bill in the, in the summertime. Um, we don't have those bills here. Nobody that I know here at Lakeside has central heat. We have fireplaces, but mostly they're ornamental. Um, and um, we don't have air conditioning. 
you, you just don't need it. We're at uh, 5,200 feet, and so the humidity is always relatively low. It never gets hot and sticky like it does at the beach. And consequently, even when it does get up to 85 or 90, it's still comfortable. Not that it does that very much. It might do that for, you know, two weeks in May. The rest of the time, it's about 75 every day. That's why we call it eternal spring. So that's another thing about the economy of living here. We don't have heating or cooling bills. Uh, and that's a big one. People always say, well, how much does it cost to live in Mexico? How much is the electricity? How much is the gas? How much is this? How much is that? The things I've mentioned are the things that make it economical. It's not that the cost of gas or the cost of electricity or the cost of food uh, in the grocery store is considerably less. It's that rents or property taxes if you own a house or medical services. If I go, I don't always go to the, to the clinic that I'm assigned to for my uh, federal health insurance here in Mexico. I always go to a private clinic. And the office call is, I think it's 20, 250 pesos now, which is like what? It's like $18 or something for an office call. And if I have to get a, if I have to get a blood test or something, or a urine test, I just go down to the, to the um, uh, laboratory and I get the cup and um, take it back with the stuff in it. And I think it was, it's $10 for a urine. Well, no, it's 100 pesos. That's like $6 for a urine test. The last time, it's been a couple of years, so it might be a little more. Um, those are the things that make living in Mexico economical, not... Um, some of the things that people oft times uh, look upon as the cost of living. Property taxes or rent if you don't own. Health care. Um, services. Those are the things that are considerably more affordable in Mexico. I don't know anyone who lives on their social security in the United States that has maids and gardeners. <laughs> now there may be some, I just said I don't know. I know quite a few people here who are in that income bracket that will have a maid or a gardener or both. Once they uh, own a property or live in one of the less expensive places to rent. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what I got to say about that today. I'll probably think of more another time. Thanks for listening.